Hello and welcome to Good or Bad. It's time to continue our trip into the Dark Knight's history on film with Batman Returns. Since Tim Burton's Batman was a big hit in 1989, a sequel was inevitable. Again directed by Tim Burton, Batman Returns was released in 1992 which also saw the return of Michael Keaton, Michael Goth, and Pat Hingle. This film did not do as well as the original, grossing only 162 million rather than the first film's 251 million, but by no means was it unsuccessful or lacking in quality. The most common complaint about this movie was it was just too dark, bringing in stronger themes such as child cruelty, intolerance to the disfigured, and stronger sexual humour. Just the pussy I've been looking for. And while I cannot say that themes like child cruelty didn't contribute to how much darker this film felt, I don't think it was the only reason why it felt so much darker than the original. The original had a colourful, upbeat villain, the Joker. Here we have the Penguin, who is just as dark and gloomy as Batman is, so he doesn't really balance out the darkness. Played by Danny DeVito, the Penguin, unlike most versions of the character, he is physically deformed to somewhat resemble a Penguin. Danny DeVito does a great job at playing this grotesque villain. He may not be as crazy as the Joker, but he certainly is scarier. So much so that in the scene where the monkey delivers the letter to Penguin, yeah I know it's silly but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, the monkey was legitimately scared by DeVito's appearance and performance. The writing in this movie is genuinely better than it was in the first, which won us over through its incredible designs and acting. But obviously this being a sequel, it had to bring something else to the table to keep things fresh and new. The film kicks off with showing us how the Penguin came to be, which was he was born deformed and his parents couldn't take it, but I doubt for any emotional reasons. Now I think it was more because they couldn't take the social embarrassment it would bring, so like any loving parents, they locked him in a cage. No, sorry, a secure cot. Until they worked out what to do with him, which was dropping him into a river, which then ran into a sewer. My God, that's just cold! Many years later, after the events of the first film, Batman is established in Gotham, and is allied with Commissioner Gordon and the rest of the GCPD. It's Christmas time in Gotham City, and millionaire Max Shrek, played by Christopher Walken, is giving a speech at the tree lighting. When suddenly... CLOWNS! Wait, what? Really? Clowns? I thought that was Joker's thing. Why does Penguin have a gang of clowns? I don't know, maybe Tim Burton just couldn't let clowns go. The clowns cause chaos in Gotham until Batman arrives. I do love that car. We get treated to new gadgets and tricks from the Batmobile, and yes, I know he killed that guy. Well, not just that guy, a whole bunch of people in this movie. But I addressed this in the review for the first film. But I will quickly go over it again. In the comics, Batman is famous for his no-killing rule but in the two Burton movies he kills many people. And I don't mind that, because it works for the movie. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying every version of Batman in every format of storytelling should be a killer. He shouldn't. But I don't mind them making him a killer if it works for the story at hand. But back to the movie. The Penguin just wanted to kidnap Max Shrek, who for the fear of his life, plus he saw publicity in it, helped the Penguin return from the sewers to the surface. And here we have Michelle Pfeiffer, playing Selina Kyle, who later becomes Catwoman, but at this point in the movie she is just Shrek's secretary. Executive assistant. Sorry. She discovers that Shrek isn't planning to supply power to Gotham, but instead suck power from Gotham. Thus getting richer. I guess. Ah, oh, whatever, we'll just chalk it up to his evil businessman. Shrek discovers her discovery and throws her out of a window. When she hits the bottom, cats nibble her. Um. Okay. Therefore she gets reborn with cat-like reflexes and a much darker personality and becomes... Catwoman. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Catwoman is a very interesting character in this movie and as usual it's her relationship with Batman that makes it so interesting. In every version of Catwoman, except that one, there has always been this uneasy relationship between Batman and Catwoman. In most iterations, she is more about the thrill of the chase than she is in getting away with a crime. In most cases, she is an anti-hero, wanting to steal jewels but also help wildlife, and even saving Batman from time to time. But I must admit that this particular version is more of a villain than anti-hero, 
but their relationship is fascinating nonetheless. But by this point in the story, the penguin has made his return to the surface by staging a kidnapping of the mayor's baby, ending with a fake rescue from the penguin, which gains him the public's trust. Bruce Wayne goes to confront Max Shrek about the power surplus in Gotham City, which results in Selina Kyle escorting him out, while taunting Max Shrek about what she knows and the fact that she survived his attempt at murdering her. You know, I'm still questioning the fact that the power of cat nibbling saved her. Yeah. Shrek helps the Penguin run for mayor, which is successful despite him chomping down on some guy's nose. But in order to cause another election, he has to ruin the mayor by proving he cannot control the chaos in Gotham City. Burn, baby, burn! Did the dog manage to pull the pin out of the grenade, or was it just lucky timing? Because that could have ended much worse for the dog. And then Batman shows up to beat the crap out of the clowns. In what is definitely my favourite live action Batman melee combat scene. After he beats them up, the dog steals his batarang. The look on his face just says it all! Then we move on to Catwoman blowing up one of Max Shrek's properties. I guess trying to kill one of your employees pisses them off. While Batman punches his way through Penguin's thugs, he arrives face to face with Penguin. They have a bit of a chat and then Catwoman shows up. Which brings the bat, the cat and the bird. Damn you Penguin, couldn't you contribute to my rhymes much more efficiently than that? Anyway, they are all together, then part ways, the Penguin flies off with his umbrella copter, then Batman goes after Catwoman who have a quick scuffle on a rooftop until Batman gets caught up in a seductive nature, which means he gets stabbed so he knocks Catwoman off the building into a conveniently placed truck full of cat litter. Real funny. Catwoman wants revenge, so she goes to the Penguin to find out if he's planning on doing anything about Batman. He's already history. Check it out. We're gonna disassemble his Batmobile and turn it into an H-bomb on wheels. How did Penguin get the blueprints to the Batmobile? Is it all just lucky guesses as to what's under the hood? But whatever, moving on. Catwoman puts his bird in her mouth? No, not like that. What is wrong with you people? What she did was threaten to eat his but No, no, she threatened to swallow his but You know, you know what? If I can't simply summarise what is going on in a movie without you lot jumping to your dirty little conclusions, I'm just not going to do this anymore. You know what, just for that, I'm gonna carry on. After she releases the bird, they come up with a plan to be put into motion during Gotham's second attempt at a tree lighting. <laughs> but before that, Bruce Wayne runs into Selina Kyle. And what I love about this scene is how Selina is defending Catwoman from the press of slander, while Bruce defends Batman from slander. Yeah. You're not making it easier to work out each other's identity at all. They go and have a dinner date at Wayne Manor, just as the Penguin kidnaps the woman who is going to turn on the Christmas tree lights, and he leaves one of Batman's batarangs at the scene of the crime. They both see the news on the TV saying that a woman has been kidnapped, and that a batarang was found at the scene of the crime. They both ask Alfred to give the other person a good reason as to why they suddenly left. Time for an epic pose! Then they suit up and meet up at the Christmas lighting event, have a bit of a fight, then Catwoman drags away the kidnapped girl. Now get ready for... Super Competent Engineering Clowns, with a monkey. I just love that scene. Batman follows Catwoman and the kidnapped girl to the roof, who is standing on the edge, not tied up so she could easily step down, but she doesn't because of some reason unknown to everyone in the world. But before sanity kicks in, the penguin throws an umbrella filled with bats at her, causing her to fall off the roof. Well, she did manage to succeed in turning on the tree lights, and you've got to say this for her. When she takes on a job, she makes sure she finishes it, even if it means it's the last thing she does. Can't say that for too many people these days. So the GCPD and the public think Batman pushed the girl. He has a quick run-in with Catwoman, chat about mistletoes and deadly kissing, and then glides off. Catwoman goes to celebrate her accomplishment with Penguin, who gets shot down so he sends her flying off with his umbrella copter. Well, 
that was weird. Batman touches down near the Batmobile, which the clowns have now finished with. What did the clowns do to the car, you ask? Well, they installed a remote control so Penguin could override the control from Batman and drive the Batmobile, who is sitting inside what was probably left over from the Batmobile Kids Ride merchandise from the first film. Penguin sends Batman on a chaotic joyride through the streets of Gotham while recording Penguin's commentary until he manages to rip out the receiver and regain control just in time to not run over this old lady. The cops give Batman a quick chase, but he manages to escape them by shedding... Um, most of the car. A moment of silence for the greatest live action representation of a comic book vehicle ever. You shall forever be in my heart. Penguin goes to deliver a speech which further increases his likelihood of becoming the mayor. Back at Wayne Manor, Alfred is talking about repairing the Batmobile. There's security to consider. It's not as though we can take it to any old Joe's body shop, is it? Security? Who lit the Kivel into the Batcave? Ouch. That's gotta burn. Bruce goes into the Batcave, grabs the recording he made of Penguin's taunts, and demonstrates his skills as a DJ. You gotta admit, I played this stinking city like a harp from hell. The masses get angry, and Penguin asks one of the truly ancient questions. Why is there always someone who brings eggs and tomatoes to a speech? He opens fire and makes a run for it, then goes back to his sewer. Then he reveals his plan to kidnap and drown the firstborn sons of Gotham City. Carry them into the sewer, and toss them into a deep, dark, watery grave! Um, Penguin? I mean, killing sleeping children. Isn't that a little, uh... New insubordination in the ranks of Penguin's clan gang. Bruce Wayne attends Matt Shrek's costume party and runs into Selina Kyle. Do you, do you get the little joke there? The two people that wear costumes on a regular basis are the only two people not wearing costumes at this costume party. <laughs> oh, the hilarity. She reveals her plans to kill Max Shrek and repeats what Batman said earlier in the movie about mistletoes. Just as Bruce Wayne then repeats what Catwoman said earlier about kissing. So now they know each other's identities. And okay, Selina didn't know she was revealing her identity by saying that, but Bruce did. And it's not like he trusts her. Sure, when it was simply just Bruce and Selina without any knowledge of each other's identity, I can see why they may have started to trust each other. But he doesn't even contemplate telling her then. Only when he finds out that she's a psycho murderer that tried to kill him, does he go, yeah, I'll tell her who I am. Anyway, the Penguin crashes the party and like all great villains announces his evil plans to everyone and ends with taking Max Shrek down to the sewers. Batman goes out and stops the kidnappers and sends his monkey back to Penguin with a note. This moves Penguin to a military footing and he gives a grand epic speech to end all speeches. Independence Day! Ah. It's okay to be scared! Many of you won't be coming back! Thanks to Batman! The time has come to punish all God's children! It's just so inspirational. First, second, third, and fourth born! Why be violent? Male and female! The sexes are equal, with their erogenous souls blown skyward! Forward! March! The liberation of Gotham has begun! Okay, so Penguin is an army of penguins with rockets strapped to their backs. That's just awesome. And his plan is now to unleash missile hell on Gotham, but of course Batman is closing in on Penguin's lair in his bat water skier. Those penguins really need to work on their accuracy. <laughs> oh, that is truly March of the Penguin. <laughs> Batman jams their signal and makes them head back home. As Batman gets even closer, Penguin's clowns run in fear, so Penguin gets in his duck 
Yeah, Batman has the cooler vehicles. Drives to the surface where Batman crashes into him. They face off until the penguins show up. Penguin knocks the detonator out of Batman's hand and I guess because he has lost all hope in his evil plans launches the missiles on his own base. Batman brought a few bats with him to attack Penguin and make him fall into the sewer. So now we have a big fiery ending, even though it's not over yet, so let's carry on. Matt Shrek gets the key from the monkey and escapes his cage, only to be tripped up into the water by Catwoman. He grabs a dead clown's gun and confronts her. She's about to kill him when Batman gets between them. He rips off his mask, although she already knew who he was, so all he was really achieving was revealing his identity to Max Shrek. Shrek shoots Batman, then shoots Catwoman several times, but she does not die. I don't know what's so hard to understand. She fell to her death, got nibbled by many, many cats, and then got reborn with cat-like reflexes and nine lives. It's very, very simple. Selina kills Shrek in a very self-destructive way. Batman gets up, as does Penguin, then falls flat on his face. I hope penguins drag thee to thy rest. While Bruce is driving home, we find out that Catwoman did indeed survive, which is a note the movie ends on. So that was Batman Returns. It's extremely silly, but extremely awesome. Like rocket strapped to a penguin's back kind of awesome. This was the last of Tim Burton's Batman movies, and because it made $90 million less than the first movie, Warner Brothers put Joel Schumacher in charge of the third and final movie in this continuity. What was that? Schumacher made two? Fourth was called Batman and Robin? No, no, don't be silly, that movie doesn't exist, it's not real, it's just a myth. It's just... it's just a myth. Okay, denying that movie's existence is not the note I want to end on. Instead, I will say Batman Returns, while not as good as the first movie, is still very good, and even though silly, it's still a lot of fun to watch. See you next time.